these are the stories of 20 years ago when we were only school children. This mentality continued during our days at the university. Insults, speeches, and punishments all continued. Yet, the difference was that on campus we became familiar with two new terms, question and research. We learned that a number of our questions were not answered. We had learned to ask the question, why? With a lot of hard work, we started communicating with the outside world. The magical power of the internet came to our help. Internet helped us learn about the views and ideas of the outside world. We realized that not everyone in this world is a trader. We learned that not everyone outside of Iran is our enemy. An amazing moment arrived when we all gathered and with our hearts filled with love and hope. The brave young Iranian stood up to the Islamic fundamentalist education. July 9, 1999 was the day the world heard our voice. I was at medical school and was working in the hospital at the time. I was teaching the wounds of my classmates. I saw my friends thrown from the top of the building by the police. I saw the arrest. The events that took place in those days gave us the confidence that we could be free and one day from this dictatorship. Internet became our powerful tool to confront the regime. The regime still did not know about this powerful tool that young students had access to. Internet was not filtered like right now. We showed the world that Iranian youth can change the regime from within. We almost brought the dictator regime down, but we did not have the international support and media coverage. A year after the student movement, I was in jail. One of my interrogators told me that during the six-day revolt, many of the government chiefs bought their tickets and packed their bags to escape from Iran. The, interrogator, the interrogators told me they the unknown soldiers, unknown soldiers of 12 Imam, stood firm and saved the regime. For the first time, I felt we had a real chance. We had everything, but we did not have the inter international support, and we did not have the support from media, so we could speak to our people. The speech you are hearing today is based on my experiences and the experiences of my friends in the past 20 years in the Islamic Republic schools. As you know, 70% 70 percent, 70 percent of the Iranian people are under the age of 35 years old. Iran has a young population. Right now, right now 20 million students are studying in Iran. Out of these 20 million students, 2 million are university students. All the textbooks are written by the mullahs and gone through the filter of the Islamic Republic. One year after the Islamic Revolution in Iran, in 1979, the official of the Islamic Republic started a program called Cultural Revolution. For four years, for four years, they closed the universities to change all the textbooks. They tried to clean the educational system. Most of the teachers were expelled, arrested, and even killed. 
You could only keep your job if you believed in supreme leader and the Islamic Republic. All the books at the school were mostly on religious fiction and superstition. Hating the world and hating other religious, especially Jews, became part of our training. Hating the U.S. and Israel were part of our everyday training. On many walls of schools in Iran, you will see Khomeini and Khomeini codes. You will see missiles like Israel should be wiped off the entire history. Why? The first page of all our books in school was started by Khomeini's famous quote. The real leader is the 12-year-old kid who strapped himself with a brain and blow himself up and he will drink the pure wine of paradise. Considering, considering the fact that 20 million students in Iran are being brainwashed through the Islamic fundamentalists. <coughs> Only a strong media like Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, and Radio Liberty can deal with this, but they don't. VOA boycotted me and my friend because we are pro west pro American, and pro Israel. <coughs> After Ahmadinejad came to power two years ago, Islamic Republic leaders started new cultural revolution called Second Cultural Revolution. This time, the leader of this revolution was a hardliner called Misbah Yazdi. All the books were changed once again. The culture of suicide bombing in the name of freedom was advertised. The brainwash at the schools has become even more dangerous than in my student years. Last week, the Ministry of Science in Islamic Republic government promised Mesbah Yazdi that in the next five years, we will reform to become completely Islamic. With this dangerous mentality, our wonderful country, Iran, will soon turn into a nation filled with suicide bombers. Our young students will be as dangerous as a nuclear bomb that will make Khomeini's wish come true, which is to export the Islamic revolution to the world. What can we do now? Education, education, and education. How? International pressure? and the regime, and support for the Iranian people and Iranian dissidents. International organizations and democratic countries should use all the forces, including political and economic sanctions, to deal with the hardliners in Iran. Media can provide information about the free world so they can understand how they can get out of the dictatorship regime. Media such as VOA and Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty has the capability to teach the Iranian about civil society. We also need hope. We need to have hope for a better future for the young people of Iran. God bless you all. Thank you. Because it's the first time that Amir is making speech in English. Yeah.